Welcome back to the Play Action Podcast with Brennan and Brock. We are here to preview week three of college football. And uh, yeah, it should be an exciting one. And uh, we got a couple games that we're going to be talking about as we roll into week three. But uh, Brock, you want to start us off or give us any recent news in college football? Yeah, there's been a lot of recent news. Yeah, we obviously have the Colorado State coach who decided that the best thing for his 0-2 football team, was, or 0-1 football team, they've only played one game, but the best thing for their football team was to uh, go on record to uh, diss primetime Deion Yeah, yeah to you know, throw some shade out there, which I don't know why you would do that. Yeah, he thought that was a really good idea um, before. Because it's not like the game was already going to be tough enough. College game day, it's on the road. Rivalry. Tough environment, rivalry. So he's like, you know what? Let me just let me just spice it up a little bit more. Yeah, let me go poke the bear. Yeah. So, <laughs> and uh, I think he's going to be regretting that coming Saturday. And I think we should start off by talking about that game. You know, it's college, college game, game day. day. College game day. Big noon kickoffs there. It's a late one. I think it's eight p.m. Mountain game. time and then ten p.m. Eastern time. But we get that in-state rivalry. Colorado State zero and one going at number eighteen. Colorado, who's obviously two and zero. The line sits at twenty three right now in Colorado's favorite and I expect that to jump after you know after what he said I saw someone's betting slip and they had like Colorado minus 40 something yeah it's like I can't go any higher yeah yeah exactly I was so. like dude I'd be smashing that cover for Colorado yeah just based off of you know his reaction as well there was Dion react to that correct yeah there's a video that came out today him talking to his team and we know tell funny. we need to tell him the exact quote from the coach Oh, yeah, yeah. So uh, Jay, Jay Norvell, Colorado State coach, um, unfortunately not going to have a job after next week because yeah. <laughs> he decided to throw it all on the line. But he shades Deion Sanders by saying, I sat down with ESPN today and I don't care if they hear it in Boulder. I told them I took my hat off and I took my glasses off. And I said, when I talk to grownups, I take my hat and my glasses off. That's what my mother taught me. They're not going to like us no matter what we say or do. It doesn't matter. So let's go up there and play. Oh, my gosh. Dude. So, what are you doing, man? No idea. What are you doing? I mean, I don't know. I feel like that's a bad representation for your players to, be, you know, go out there and, you know, just talk about the other coach, like, just blatantly. You know, it's, it just sets a bad example for the players, I think. Well, and, like... It's a weird hill to die on. Yeah. It's like when, when you're talking to somebody, if you have a hat on, who cares? Yeah. If you have, you know, maybe sunglasses I could maybe get behind. Yeah. But then again, like if I'm talking to someone with sunglasses, like it's whatever. That's such a, I feel like that's such a ticky tacky, like this, you know? Yeah. It's like, oh dude, like what, what are you wearing in these interviews? It's like, oh, like, when he talks to me, he wears his hat and sunglasses. It's yeah. like. It's like, okay, okay. Dude, who cares? <laughs> like, I'm going to go out and coach a football game. Like, I don't care about what you're wearing. Exactly. So it's like, it's a weird hill to die on. It's a weird thing to really, it's almost like he was like sitting at home. And he's like, what stupid thing can I say this yeah. week yeah. to really get this one going? He probably cooked that up and he's like, oh man, like, so I'm going to get him with I'm this gonna one. I'm going to get him with this one. I'm gonna, yeah. I don't know if I, I should, should I hold back on this? Like, I might be dissing him too hard, but. Yeah, he came out with that weak diss. He probably like told all of his buddies too. He's like, "Yo, I'm gonna hit Dion with this. What do you think?" They're, They're all like, like, "Oh yeah, that's oh sick, yeah, dude. dude. Yeah, I see, see what happens to your team after you do that. Yeah. <laughs> and if if you didn't have one buddy step up and say, "Hey, man, that's not a good idea." Yeah. Then he's got to get new friends. Yeah, you got to get new friends. Got to get another two button. He needs some new buddies. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So. But I mean, I think that they're gonna pay for that, and I think Colorado is just gonna continue to roll like they have been. I mean. The Buffs lead the series 67 to 22, and they won the last five straight. And this is not a Colorado team who's been impressive in the past, you know, in the in in recent history. Yeah. No, yeah. And I I think the stat that really stood out to me, obviously it's early in the season. Not many teams have played a lot of games, so obviously stats are inflated, but this is one of the worst defenses in the nation. Colorado State. Colorado State based off their first game. So having the idea that maybe, you know, getting Shador Sanders, Travis Hunter and all those boys, getting them even more angry is going to somehow play into your favor is just, yeah, it's just unbelievable. Yeah. I just, 
I can't get behind that, mm. you know? So it's going to be, I don't know. It's going to be a really interesting game. Cause yeah. I think a lot of, and maybe this is why he did it, but I think a lot of people kind of looked at this game and they're like, this is going to be one that Colorado just rolls. Yeah. You know, they're going to roll. They're going to get it done. And then, you know, on to, on to Oregon next week. Yeah. Maybe, so, yeah. Maybe coach is trying to like light some fire in his team. And honestly, like, I think, I think Colorado state might've been looking at it this way is, you know, maybe, maybe Colorado's overlooking us. Yeah. You know, maybe they're, they're already looking towards Oregon next mm-hmm. week and USC the week after, but then their coaches has to come out and open his mouth. I know. So now that that whole Colorado team is refocused, they're dialed in and they want it. They want to beat the crap out of, out of this Colorado. It state could have been, now. yeah, it could have been like a sneaky, like, Hey, like they're probably looking forward to, you know, ranked opponent, Oregon ranked opponent, USC in the next two coming weeks. Yeah. But then he goes and drops that statement. All the focus is back to them. So, I mean, I don't necessarily agree with the media play there by coach. But I think that, yeah, I'm going to pick Colorado <laughs> to win this game. I think that's a smart and one. And I yeah. think they're going to cover as well. I'd say I, I don't even know if I want to pick Colorado. I'm just going to pick the cover, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, it's like, I'm going to pick the cover because I think that they're going to go out there. And, you know, based off those comments, maybe they're not going to be, you know, holding up towards the end of the third quarter, fourth quarter, she can be laying on the gas and say like, if it wasn't obvious enough to pick Colorado, it's like, I'm, I'm picking, picking them to win handedly. Yeah. You know, I think it, it could get really, you know, there's a situation where it might be like two minutes left in the fourth quarter. They might be up by like 40 and they're still see an onside kick or something. Yeah. Or they're still throwing the ball. It's like trying to get more points up on that board. So it's scary. The the one thing that was interesting to me about Colorado is they, they do give up the most sacks in the nation. They do. Yeah. Obviously small sample size, only two weeks, but um, I think Shador Sanders has been sacked 12 times this year already. And they're aggressive. They throw the ball a lot. So you got to take those things into consideration. But so that will be interesting if that trend continues towards, you know, the middle and towards the end of the season. Yeah. Once they start to get into conference play, but um, yeah, I'm going to take, I'm going to take Colorado. Yeah. I agree um, with that. I'm going to take Colorado big too. It would be interesting to see because I think at the time of filming this or a little bit before, we we had the line at 23. Yeah. Um, it'd be interesting to see if that line has moved. Yeah. I assume it, it might have moved a little bit at least. I think it will. But, um, you know, this Colorado team has already proven so many doubters wrong. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of people had them penciled in for, you know, three wins on the season. Mm-hmm. You know, they have a chance to go 3-0 and and really stake their claim in the Pac-12 and – and I think, I think their ceiling is, is, is really high. Yeah. Oh so yeah. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting to see, you know, how this game pans out, but especially, you know, the next couple of weeks with the two big dogs that they got on their schedule. Yep. Transitioning into a little bit of an SEC matchup being that number 11, Tennessee going at Florida, who is one and one. This is kind of a little sleeper, obviously huge rivalry. Huge rivalry. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know. We, on our graphic, we put Tennessee on potential upset alert this weekend. Why? Why? Yeah. So I was, I was digging in this game because I I saw something. It was like Tennessee have lost nine straight games in the swamp. And for an SEC team, that kind of opens your eyes a little bit. I was like, nine straight in the swamp. So I was digging into their, their, uh, match history and kind of the games they've played in, in recent, in recent history. And Florida is 16 and two against Tennessee since 2005. Wow. So they have lost two games in the last, you know, what, 18 years. So, you know, like I said, this is a rivalry game. This is, this is a game that does mean a lot to both teams. And we kind of saw that game last year, Mm -hmm. you know, Tennessee came out, you know, playing pretty tough. Florida obviously, you know, made some, some made a comeback, play, some plays down the stretch. Yeah, yeah to bring it was, it was a little too little too late. Yeah, I think I they thought. had the Hail Mary attempt at yeah, the end. Yeah, fell a little short. But um, if you don't think Florida is going to be ready for this game, I I just don't know what to tell you. Oh yeah, you know if you think of of Florida's seasons last year, for the most part it was pretty disappointing. But they they got the win over top ten Utah earlier in the season. You got another you know close to top ten. You got number eleven team coming in the country coming into town. I think that Tennessee could be in trouble here. Yeah. Yeah. And similar to Utah was last year, you know, going in the swamp, obviously Utah turned out to be the better team, 
but Florida just performs better in the swamp and that's just how they are. And if you think about a recruit who wants to go to Florida, the importance of this game, you know, going into that school and going in and beating Tennessee. I mean, that's kind of like what you go there for is this rivalry is so big. You think back on Swamp Kings, it's like they kind of discuss the importance of, you know, beating Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, this, even though Florida, you know, they're one and one coming off a, a little bit of a downer season last year, they're going to come out and they're going to, they're going to want to win this game as much as Tennessee does, even though Tennessee is, you know, starting off top 10 and top 11 in the nation. Yeah. And, and Tennessee is a weird team. You know, obviously they lost Hen and Hooker to the NFL. Joe Milton takes over. Um, they played really well against Virginia, but I think we're starting to learn that Virginia might be one of the, they might be the new Colorado. Yeah. <laughs> they might be one of the worst you know, power five teams um, in the nation. And then last week against Austin pay, it was a closed game. Yeah. You know, it was 23, 13 with nine minutes left in the fourth quarter. So it really was, you know, only a two score game late in the fourth or getting into the fourth. So it kind of begs the question because Tennessee and Florida both played FCS teams last week. Florida obviously took care of their FCS team at home, beat them handily 49 to seven, I believe. And Tennessee struggled a little bit. So you kind of wonder, you know, is Tennessee not really clicking on all cylinders yet? Is there potentially a chance that that Graham Mertz, you know, has a game? Yeah. And I don't think Graham Mertz has necessarily played terrible. Yeah. You know, he threw for, you know, over 300 yards against Utah in the first uh, first game of the season. So it's going to be really interesting to see kind of what the game plan is for Florida. I assume they're going to try to run the ball. Um, but that's, that's also what Tennessee is going to try to do. So whatever team can stop the run, you know, they're going to be, they're going to be in good shape going into this one. Yeah. Let's talk about that receiver of Florida, Pearsall. Ricky Pearsall. Ricky Pearsall. He was a dog. I mean, we got yeah. to see him in person two years in a row at both mm -hmm. those Utah matchups. And, you know, it seemed like he was the target more than 50% of the time. And he's very efficient. Yeah. And, and that was a real game plan. It, it looked like uh, Billy Napier wants to get, the ball into Ricky Pearsall's hands because mm -hmm. when, when Ricky Pearsall has the ball in his hands, you know, the plays can be made. And, and I think that if, if Florida plays this right and they can get, you know, get the ball into, into Ricky's hands and have him make a play and go up early on Tennessee, get the swamp into it, get the fans going, get the team going. I think this could be a really scary game yeah. for Tennessee, especially with, with the history that's there of, of them not performing too well down in the swamp. I think it could be a really, really tough game for them. And and I'm interested to see, because I think Billy Napier really needs, he really needs a signature win again. He does. To really kind of get everybody back on his side. Mm -hmm. I think everyone was all aboard the bandwagon after the Utah win. Then the rest of the season didn't really play out too favorably. I think he's starting to lose everybody again. But if he can get a big win over Tennessee at home, I think that's the the perfect step to getting everybody back on on the Billy Napier train. Yeah. And urban touched on that in the documentary, how it was like, you know, after a big loss, it was like, I mean, he couldn't even go into a bar without getting cussed out, stuff like that. Yeah. So definitely a must win um, for the coach there. And then, you know, based off all that, who do you got winning the game? I'm going with Florida. Wow. I'm going with Florida Gators. I believe that Joe Milton, I'm a big Joe Milton fan because of, I'm a big fan of QBs that are just freaks. And yeah. that's what Joe Milton is. You know, he's, got, he's got all the intangibles. He's got everything you want. He just needs to refine some of his skills. He needs to get more accurate. He needs to, to run the offense a little bit better and know the offense a little bit better. But I think he's he's very similar profile to AR. I think AR was a lot more ahead of schedule than he was, mm -hmm. which is why he went so high in the draft. But I don't know. I, th I think if if the Swamp really gets going, I think if if Florida gets on the board first, Swamp really gets behind that defense, they force a couple turnovers, I think it could be a really, really long day for Tennessee. So don't be surprised if if Tennessee goes in, goes into Gainesville and, and doesn't get the job done because yeah. I think this is probably the most likely upset of the week. Really? Okay. I'm going to I'm gonna go Tennessee. I do agree that um, Florida or uh, Tennessee is on upset alert, but I think Florida or Tennessee will get it done. Yeah, Tennessee's gonna have to really they're gonna have to run the ball through Jabari Small. Um, and if they don't if they don't get it done that way, then it could be a rough afternoon. Yeah. Next game, a little uh non conference action. We got number fifteen Kansas State going at Missouri. It's a big twelve SEC matchup. 
Both starting off the season undefeated 2-0. and Kansas State, obviously, with the upper hand, ranked 15th in the country. But, uh, you know, the real question for Kansas State is, can they win back-to-back uh, Big 12 championships? Yeah, I think uh, most people were surprised when they got the job done last year and beat TCU in the yeah. Big 12 championship game, especially that TCU that went on to the national yeah, championship. And TCU was undefeated at the time. So, you know, I think Kansas State has... They have a lot of of what you need to be really good in the Big 12. Yeah. Uh, they got great quarterback play. For the most part, the defense has done their job through the first two, obviously, against, you know, lesser opponents. But this is gonna be a real this is gonna be a real challenge for Kansas State. I was kind of looking into this game because I know that Kansas and Missouri is a big rivalry. It's called the uh called the border war. Mm-hmm. So I was looking into stuff about Kansas State and Missouri. Uh, it sounds like it is a rivalry, but maybe not as big as, as say a Kansas and Missouri, but you wouldn't tell that from people online. <laughs> oh, really? There's a, there's some, a lot of chirping. Yeah. There's some chirping going from a uh, Kansas state, Missouri fans. Dang. So this is a game that is, I think it's the most underrated game of the week. Really? I think a lot of people might enjoy tuning into this game. It's only a five point spread. I mean, Kansas state's fa- favor. So I'm. I'm liking a close game here, personally. Well, yeah, and, and we saw with with Georgia, they went down to and played Missouri when they were number one in the nation, um, and they struggled. Yeah. So, you know, I think the I think the crowd's going to be up for it. It's it's an old, you know, Big Twelve, Big Eight, I believe, rivalry, uh, one of the original schools. So it's going to be a good game, and I and I think that uh, both teams are going to want to to go three and zero and and go into conference play. Oh, absolutely. You know, with a with that big undefeated big step. Yeah, undefeated. undefeated record going into conference play big time. And they played last year, right? Kansas State, I believe, won. Correct. Yeah, they won pretty big. I think it was what, 40 to 12. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 40 to 12. Missouri has won the last five of seven matchups. How often do they play? It's been off and on since they uh since the move. They they played last year and then they played I want to say it was like 2017 mm-hmm. as well. So not as much since uh the big 12 days, but I think they still get a get a home and home in yeah. every once in a while. So who do you got winning this year, though? Man, it's a tough one. This is a tough one. Uh, Will Howard's obviously the X factor. Yeah, um, it used to be Deuce Vaughn for yeah. Kansas State. Deuce Vaughn's gone. It's going to have to be Will Howard. He's going to have to take over, and he's going to have to be the guy for Kansas State. And I think he can be the guy for Kansas State. I think that he can he can really make plays that Kansas State's going to need throughout the game to to win because I, I think Missouri is going to be going to be ready for this game yeah especially their fans I think it's going to be a, it's going to be a packed stadium it's going to be really loud and I think that Missouri is going to do everything in their power to make this this a tough environment for Kansas State absolutely um and I'm going to back the SEC again oh or back I guess the underdog again this time being an SEC team in Missouri I'm going to go with Missouri over Kansas State Dang. getting an upset win I, they got embarrassed last year yeah, and they're going to be back. It sounds like a lot of people around the Missouri program haven't necessarily forgot about it. Really? So, a little um, salt in, a little salt in the mouth. A little upset. They want it. They want to get one back. So, I think Missouri really finds a way to kind of limit Kansas State to be to be uh, one, very one dimensional. And I think that they they make the play that's needed on Will Howard to get the job done. So I got Missouri beating Kansas. State. Yeah, this is a tough one. Um both the teams they defend the run really well. I mean, looking down at our stats, it's like what 38 38 yards per game around there. What is it? 38 yards per game, Kansas State and then Missouri being 58. So, I think it's going to come down to quarterback play. I think Will Howard will get it done. He's a better quarterback in this situation. So, I'm going to go K State with that one last game that we're going to talk about another Great non-conference matchup. It's it seems to be one that we get almost every year. Correct. Yeah, this one oh. we had last year. Uh, I think just this is the second part of the home to home. Yeah, yeah, but, but um, it's going to be a number eight Washington going on the road to Lansing, Michigan to play Michigan State. Spreads uh, sixteen as of right now for Washington and those Huskies, and uh, you know obviously. Just be a big win for Michigan State, and, and there's a lot going on in that program right now. Tons for Michigan State. Yeah, Mel Tucker uh, been suspended. Uh, there was a lot of rumors that he got fired. Yeah, I saw that. I, I didn't know if it was confirmed or not. Yeah, so I was kind of going through conflicting reports of of people saying that Michigan State have, has fired Mel Tucker. It sounds like he's 
only suspended with no pay. He's away from the program right now as they're going through the investigation. Yeah. Uh, I don't really want to talk too much about the investigation because if it's true, it's just, just kind of sickening. Yeah. You know, just kind of, if you really want to read into the story, you can, you can type it in. It's everywhere. Yeah. But, um, it's a little sickening. It's a little, little, uh, disturbing too, but, yeah. um, we're here to talk about football. We're, yeah. We're here to talk yeah. about football. football. We're not here to talk about the off the field stuff. Yeah. Unless it's a, unless it's John let's, Harbaugh. <laughs> yeah. With his, uh, with his burger. Or Jim Harbaugh. Or Jim Harbaugh. Jim, yeah, Harbaugh, Jim Harbaugh. Or if it's Dion. Dion yeah. on the mic. So that's, that's the only thing we cover off the field, but, but yeah, so no, no Mel Tucker for, for Michigan state. Um, so it's going to be, it's going to be an interim. Um, I, I do not know who the interim is. I haven't really, I think it's into, yeah, assistant coach. One of the assistants. Yeah. I can't, I do not have his name on me, but uh, that's going to play a factor. I think, um, how invested is the team? You know, yeah. a, lot, a lot of the, a lot of the team came to university of Michigan state to play you know, for Mel Tucker, Yeah, you know, now to hear kind of the story and have that around the program, it's not a very good look. Oh yeah. You know, it's not a very good look for them. So it's going to be interesting to see what kind of effort they get. Cause you know, there's usually two things that can happen in this scenario. You know, one, they rally around the interim head coach and do something special or they just get, they get slaughtered, they you get know, slaughtered, they get, they get distracted, they get, you know, and, and this is a team that you don't want to be distracted on, you know, during this week, because I mean, Washington has been looking unbelievable. Yeah, they have they have the capability to go out there and embarrass yeah, you. Yeah. So, you know, it's definitely something you don't want to be dealing with going into this game. So it'll be really interesting to see what kind of Michigan uh, State team we get on Saturday. Yeah, last year they played uh, in Seattle. Washington was able to get that done 39-28. to 28. Mm -hmm. And for me, I'm just going to jump into the prediction. I think that Washington's going to take care of business on the road. You know, Michael Penix Jr. has just been balling. No, yeah, and um, that game last year was was probably the coming out party for Washington because yeah. they beat a ranked Michigan State at home. Mm -hmm. Michael Penix threw it all over the park, and it really started like bringing up the conversation: is, is Washington a threat? Yeah, like, is Michael Penix a Heisman candidate? Yeah, it's like is it, is this team gonna is this team gonna really challenge for for you know the conference and, and be able to beat some of these bigger teams? Obviously, they lost to ASU later on in the season. Yeah, that was kind of. Kind of unfortunate, but they got the big win over Oregon, um, and they they looked really good last year. But I, I'm with you though. I think Washington is going to get it done. It's the situation up up at MSU is it's just unfortunate, and and you don't want to be around it. And I think that that Washington is is going to get on them really quickly, and I think it has the potential to get really really ugly. Yeah, and back on that Mel Tucker. So if he does get fired, does that open up the portal for the players? Yes. So for within a 60 day span, if, if I'm not mistaken, I think that it gives them just cause you get the, the free one. Yeah. And I think you get another one. Should a coach get fired? Okay. So I think they don't necessarily have to in 60 days. I could be okay. wrong, but, um, I but think you would them, see, okay. I think you would see a lot of players enter the portal. In yeah. That scenario. Which I mean, I hate, you know, if I, if I was being recruited and I want to go play for Mel Tucker, yeah. I go in there, you know, obviously an unfortunate situation happens and, you know, he gets laid off, man, I would just, that would just be very disappointing as yeah. like a student athlete. Yeah. You know, and, and it, it is really, it is really tough. Cause I, I, I think a lot of the things that go under the radar with stuff like this is the players. Yeah. It's like. I'm sure Mel Tucker wasn't the only reason that players came to play yeah. at Michigan state, but you know, he's, he's one of the driving forces, you know, you oh, meet yeah. the coach, you meet all the assistant coaches, you build those relationships, you build those, build those bonds. And then for something like this to happen, it's like, you almost feel a little betrayed. Yeah. So absolutely. Uh, obviously, you know, we want to wait until everything is, has been, you know, all the information has been gathered before yeah. kind of making the opinions, but yeah, making assumptions. Um, just, it definitely doesn't look like a great situation yeah. out there. Yeah, so we both got Washington winning that game. We got anything else? Because those are the top four games of the week that we're going to cover. Any other news? No, yeah, I think we we handled Colorado State. We got Michigan State. Uh, for the most part, it's been it's been a quiet week. Yeah, it really has. It's really I think it's calm before the storm because if you look at week four, yeah, we're looking at a handful of uh, ranked matchups. So it's kind of just like, all right, we've digested two weeks of college football. You know, kind of relax for a second, take a breath. And enjoy, enjoy maybe maybe a more mellow week three. And then we're jumping right back into a week four with, you know, going into conference play. And maybe that's what we'll do after uh, after week three. You know, we've seen three weeks of football. Yeah. 
we'll start uh maybe we'll go back and do another college football playoff prediction yeah yeah we'll dive into maybe some new who we think is gonna win the conferences and I stuff like that. too we'll yeah. dive into like maybe we'll do that like every three weeks yeah it's like week three week six week yeah. nine week i like that because i mean even after two weeks it's like a lot has been revealed to us yeah you know a lot of people who probably didn't have florida state and texas being you know potential playoff teams yeah. after two weeks they both look fantastic alabama i was thinking about this the other night actually about alabama and lsu they're basically both not maybe not both but one of those teams is eliminated from the playoff yeah because they got to play each other yeah you know later down the season so there's a there's an interesting scenario that I was kind of starting to craft in my mind. Oh yeah. Maybe say like, you know, the winner of the LSU Alabama game goes into the SEC Championship game and beats Georgia. Georgia not having the strongest of schedules, does that hurt them, you know? Depends on if Georgia's undefeated going into that game. Yeah. But like maybe maybe they're 12 and 1 non-conference champion and there's four other teams that are 12 and 1 conference champions. Does a team like that get left out? You know, you never know. There's a lot of football to play, but well, I mean, that's a realistic scenario. But I mean, will a college football playoff ever exclude a one loss Georgia, and one being to you know, know, SEC champion? Maybe it's you just got so like, tough. I maybe, mean, maybe you got like a twelve and one Texas, a twelve and one like say like let's say USC just yeah. for example, a twelve and one Michigan or Ohio State, and then a twelve and one LSU who won the SEC. You know, Florida State's twelve and one potentially. Yeah. You know, obviously there's a ton of football to play. But yeah, but it's just, I mean, it's like scenarios get me excited. You know, yeah. for the end of the season. But you know, I think that's going to wrap things up for our week three preview. Thanks for joining us on the Play Action Podcast. Make sure to follow our all of our socials, um, Twitter, Instagram, down yeah, down below, and uh, YouTube as well. And make sure you subscribe as well if you're if you're watching on YouTube. But uh, yeah, we'll see you next week uh, with a recap for week three.